So we're trying to see the state of bridges are. pretty bad. I don't know if you can see. There's a lot of gunk there. So um, we decided to clean that bilge and for doing that we will use a um, ordinary oil pump to extract all the water from the bilge. I'll try to disconnect the pump and clean the pump as well. So we're trying to get rid of the smell on the boat and we think that the bilge is one of the reasons why it's smelling so bad. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Oh my god, it smells like diesel, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. I think it's oil. It's oil. oil. The automatic bilge pump works perfectly fine. But we didn't use it as we didn't want this oil to end up in the sea. Three quarter full, but no half. So far, it's like three liters. Oh my God. Most of it is a um, oil from the engine, I think. And some other small parts. Got no bells there. full it's eight liters there and there's still more to go from the bilge okay let's go pumping <laughs>
still going? No, it's gone. Okay, so we found even more oil under the engine. Uh, our engine is a Perkins 75 um, and the model is a 4236. Uh, these engines are known for use in agriculture, uh, specifically in tractors, but then later they found their use in the marine industry. Uh, they're very durable, um, very reliable when they are taken care of, and some people say that they can last forever. But we'll see. <laughs> Uh, this one is, I think, the original one, uh, so since the boat was built in 1981. We spoke to uh, several experts, uh, one of the engineers who actually worked with these engines and has a lifetime experience has told us that, um, well, it's not an issue that is quite typical for these engines to leak a little bit of oil. And um, he said that if uh, it doesn't leak oil, there's probably uh, no oil in it. So and that's, that's an issue. Um, so yeah, once we extracted all of it, uh, all in all, we had about three canisters uh, of 20 litres each and also a couple or several um, plastic bottles. So there was quite a lot of it. Um, it wasn't all pure oil. Uh, we had to dilute it because it was uh, so thick, it was very difficult to extract. So now that we have all this oil, uh, we have to dispose of it somehow. Uh, we initially went to the marina office and asked if they have such facilities, but they unfortunately they don't. But we found a local company that uh, will come and collect it um, and dispose of it safely for a small fee. Well, exactly £40. Pounds. So that's a good deal. Ziggy dismantled the table to remove all the soles and we got down to more scrubbing. Ready to place it? Yeah, put it back, it's all clean, nice and clean. Not too bad. How are you feeling? Tired. Sick of villages. I think the first two are quite satisfying when you see how clean they become. Almost brand new. But after like three or four, I'm sick. Hello, good morning. Um, so last night we finished quite late. Uh, we've done all the bilges and also the uh, engine compartment. So the space under the engine is uh, now almost sparkling clean. Now we would like to do some more cleaning uh, upstairs. We then moved up into the cockpit and the deck, which was covered in grime and reddish dust from the Sahara. I cleaned the cockpit locker where our dinghy is stored. In the meantime, Ziggy got down to cleaning the teak, which looked a bit sad. We used the Starbright teak cleaner and it worked wonders.
We were curious whether the dinghy was in a good condition, so we also took this opportunity to inflate it, leave it overnight to see if it holds air well. Luckily, it did. There were also a lot of personal belongings left behind by the previous owner, which we had to get rid of. So it took several days to go through it and clear out what we didn't need. Thank you for watching. Please hit the thumbs up as it really helps our channel. See you next time.